everyone, it's Shannon joining you for this week's Creature Feature. This week we're going to talk about sea hares. Now, I can't find these in my backyard, but there have been a lot of them washing up on Sanibel's beaches lately, so I thought why not talk about them. They also happen to be some of my all-time favorite creatures. I think they are adorable, really, really cute, but I'll let you form your own opinion about that. They are definitely, though, some of the coolest creatures in the ocean. So for the next couple of minutes, just sit back, relax, and let me tell you all about them. I promise it will blow your mind. Some of the images are borrowed in this creature feature, but the credit will appear on the screen. The term sea hare is a common name, and it refers to a lot of different species. Most of them belong to a genus called Aplesia, but they all belong to a larger group of animals called gastropods. This phylum is made up of snails and slugs found in salt water, fresh water, and on land. They got their name from their rhinophores. Those are the two little structures sticking up out of their head that resemble the ears of a hare. These are sensory structures. They help the sea hares smell and taste their environment. There are a couple species that we commonly see around Sanibel. One of them is the ragged sea hare. They're greenish brown, small, and they've got these cute little frillies coming off of their backs. The other one is the sooty sea hare, or sometimes called the mottled sea hare. It's also a greenish brown, but they tend to be much larger, and they can swim. Not all sea hares can swim. Some of them just crawl along the bottom using their foot. But, like you see the sooty sea hare doing here, some of them can use their parapodia to swim. They flap them like wings. The parapodia are extensions of the mantle, and they also can use them to protect their internal organs and to help push water over their gills to breathe. Sea hares will develop from eggs. So they lay these long strings of eggs called cordons. And at first glance, they look like ramen noodles. They come in all different colors. But when you take a closer look, there are these awesome, beautiful little egg casings that look like stars in the sky. After the sea hares hatch from these, they will have a planktonic state where they're floating in the water as a larva, and then they develop into what we know as an adult. They settle and they metamorphose, and this takes about a month. They'll only settle, though, if they find a good place, and usually what they're looking for is their preferred food. Another distinctive feature of sea hares is that they have a small internalized shell. You can see a couple pictures of them here. So the shell doesn't really do anything to protect them anymore. And honestly, they're not very fast. So they had to come up with other ways to defend themselves. Okay, buckle up guys, because this is where it gets really cool. So, sea hares have an impressive array of chemical defenses. They have both passive and active. Passive are just compounds that they store in their tissues and they get it from their food. So sea hares are herbivorous. They feed on algae, mostly red and green algae. And they can take compounds from it and store it in their tissues to make them either toxic or taste really bad to predators. And the other form of defense they have is active, and this is inking. When a sea hare feels threatened, it will ink. And their ink is this beautiful purplish, red, and sometimes even pinkish color. When the sea hares ink, they will also release opaline. They store opaline in a different gland in their bodies. So what they'll do is take ink and opaline, mix them together in their mantle cavity for a few seconds to create entirely different compounds that are very effective at warding off predators, and then they'll release that through their siphon in the direction of an attacker. This ink mixture has been shown to block receptors in the spiny lobster, making it hard for them to sense food odors and find prey. It's also been shown to be a warning signal to other sea hares. So if they sense the ink in the water, they know it's time for them to try to get away. Okay, if that wasn't enough to get you hooked on this creature, get this. They're also a model used to study the neural basis of learning and memory. They have relatively few neurons, and they're also really large. So it's easy for scientists to map synapses and understand how communication works through a nervous system. In fact, these guys have contributed enormously to our understanding of how organisms acquire, store, and eventually use their experiences. I could probably go on for hours and hours, but I'll leave you with that. I hope you have a newfound appreciation for these gooey, squishy, amazing sea creatures. Be sure to join us next week. Stay safe, wash your hands, and thanks for being a part of nature near you.